I love video game music, but what about video games that let you make music? There are actually a lot of them out there, if you know where to look. As both a video game enthusiast He's so unlikable. and a composer, I thought it would be a fun challenge to recreate the same loop across several different video game DAWs, if you can call them that. I already knew a few games that might work, but I had to dig a bit deeper to find more. The requirements are simple. It must be a console or handheld game, i.e. no PC software. It must, at bare minimum, allow the player to create their own melody, note for note. Only games or softwares that were available during the appropriate time period for their respective platforms, which means no hacks, homebrews, or anything of that nature. I'm excluding Mario Paint because, let's face it, it's been done to death, and I'm also excluding tools like LSDJ, which were designed long after the hardware they run on. Even with these exclusions, there were still tons of options, so I had to narrow it down, and I settled on five games. Without further ado, let's get started. Game 1. Game Boy Camera. For my first attempt, I went with Game Boy Camera, mainly because I'm already somewhat familiar with it, and it's extremely basic with what it lets you do. You only get four beats or one measure of music. There are three channels, a noise channel, an oscillator channel where you can control cycle, gain, and even a modulator, a wavetable channel, which is pretty cool. If you're the patient type, you could design your own Game Boy samples with this, although the process is pretty time consuming due to the controls. Given these three channels, my options were limited, so I decided on drums, bass, and a simple melody. Let's have a listen. It's not much, but hey, I made this. The simplicity of this loop means we have room to build upon it in other games that allow for more channels and longer compositions. While I'm not composing entire songs for this challenge, I'll at least attempt to recreate this loop in each game from here on out. Game 2, WarioWare DIY. This one had a bit of a learning curve and I had to sit through some tutorials before I was allowed to make anything. The game lets you develop your own mini-games, and part of that process is creating music. This time, we get two full measures of music, one rhythm channel for percussion, four instrument channels, totaling five channels. There is a good variety of instruments, and the DS samples are fun to mess around with. I had a great time creating a slightly more complex version of my initial loop. I challenged myself to create the loop from memory and even embellished a bit in the second measure, just because I could. There are a few mistakes in the notation, but the spirit of the original loop is still there. Let's listen. Okay, now I'm having fun. I love that crunchiness from the low sample rate. I'd say I think this one is a success. Game 3, Korg DS10. Next up is another DS title. Like Game Boy Camera, I'm limited to two oscillator channels and one percussion channel. This time I have way more control over each oscillator. The sequencer is also considerably easier to use. I stumbled with the controls at first, not realizing until almost the end that pressing R swaps the screens. One neat feature here is the delay effect, which allows you to control the time, stereo, and wet dry mix, and even the channels it affects. I gave my melody a spacious stereo delay and tighten the ADSR on both the melody and the bass, and here's the result. I honestly kind of love how this sounds. The delay effect really sells it for me. I'm happy to call this one another success. Game 4, Jam with the Band the third DS game on the list. This one has a great selection of instrument samples and a whopping eight channels, though I won't be using that many here. In Jam with the Band, you work with music notation instead of a piano roll or step sequencer. I didn't bother to set the key, but if you're curious, it's in C minor. You get up to 120 bars, which is a lot. You could create a full composition with this. This is the first game or tool so far that offers this much freedom to create music basically however you want. 
I set the tempo to 121 BPM, which is roughly in the ballpark of our original loop. And after setting up the instruments, filling in the notes, and looping the pattern a few times, I was pretty much done. But then I added a vibraphone accompaniment because I was feeling cocky. Although in hindsight, it kind of clashes with the main melody, but here it is anyway. From this point on, things are gonna get weird, so strap in. Game five, Techno Motor. Next, we are venturing into something more unusual, a Sega Saturn game called Techno Motor. If you've never heard of it, you're not alone. It's a bit obscure, with an official release only in Japan. This software is surprisingly powerful for its time, loaded with tons of samples that would take a lifetime to explore. I only wish it were easier to preview said samples before choosing them. Maybe there's a function I haven't discovered yet, but the interface is beautiful. It reminds me of Metal Gear Solid 2, but predates it by several years. I found myself taking my time with this one a bit more just because I loved the way it looked. I initially thought I understood the basics. I was choosing samples for each channel thinking I had 14 channels to work with, but it turns out there are only nine, with one channel specifically being reserved for six individual drum samples. As I was figuring out how to make music with them, I realized that music creation is in a separate menu. No biggie. After a bit of trial and error, I realized this software has four main sections. Unit. This is where you set up your instruments and mix them. You control the gain, panning, and reverb, and choose which instruments are playable in real time. More on that momentarily. Pattern. This is similar to patterns in FL Studio. You have a single pattern of music, but multiple patterns can combine into a single song. Each pattern uses a unit loadout, so you could theoretically change instruments for a new take on the same melody. Pad set. I didn't get into this section much, but it's essentially how you set up controls for live playing. You see, both players one and two can use their controller to play along with the music. This is a pretty cool feature if you have low latency, but since I didn't need it for this challenge, I skipped it. Song. Here is where you arrange saved patterns in any order you like. I only created one pattern, so I placed it here and saved my track. Finally, I went to the song select menu, chose a visual background to accompany my new track, and here it is. There are a few imperfections and inconsistencies, but since the software is extremely clunky, fixing small mistakes means navigating a ton of menus. I genuinely did not feel like it. Perfection isn't a criteria for success in this challenge, so this'll do fine. Game 6, Desaemon 2. Last but not least is another Japan-exclusive Sega Saturn game. This is actually a shoot-'em-up game, or shmup, that lets you create custom content, including your own 3D models, maybe? Pretty wild, right? But I'm here for one thing only, the music editor. If you know me, you know that I have a bit of a history with shmup music. so there's some precedent here. But please don't get your hopes up. This one is all in Japanese, so navigating was a bit challenging. But it wasn't too hard to figure it out. It uses classic notation with four monophonic channels, a pared down version of a general MIDI library, and some other minor functions. I got a bit confused with certain things like changing the tempo and copying pasting notes. I also learned the hard way that the paintbrush tool changes all notes on screen to the last instrument you clicked on. Oops. Once again, I aimed to capture the essence of the original loop without using the exact same instruments, and here's the result.
It's not perfect, and I'm starting to see how I could have used these limitations to inspire a little more creativity, but hey, I'm learning. I'm gonna call this last one another success. So there you have it. The same loop recreated in five different video game DAWs. Um, honestly, all of these tools are pretty cool. It was difficult for me to choose a favorite, but it's gotta be between Jam with the Band and Techno Motor. Techno Motor has a super cool UI. I really loved it. Um, the selection of samples was awesome. I'd love to get my hands on some of those samples, honestly. If anybody knows the source of them, that would be great. Um, the other option is Jam with the Band. Uh, I think this one might be better overall. It's a little bit more intuitive in how you control it and how you lay out your music. It's just a little bit easier to get from from a blank canvas to something to listen to, uh, whereas Techno Motor is a little bit more obtuse with its menu system, although it looks really nice. But Jam with the Band really does have a great selection of instruments. Um, I love working with classic notation, especially in a video game. You don't really you don't really see that very much. And uh, it, it gives you a large number of channels to work with, which is great. Techno Motor does have great sonic texture. It's got a lot of it's got a very Sega Saturn sound to it, especially with the reverb. The, the Sega Saturn's built in reverb is, is a pretty cool effect. And the library of samples is massive, so it does have that versatility, but um, it's got to be Jam with the band for me. I think Jam with the band is the best one of this list. And I think that's about it. There are a lot of others out there too that uh, that I know I didn't cover in this video, such as Magic Music Maker, MTV Music Generator. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to try every single one. Anyway, what game do you think has the best music editor? And don't say Little Big Planet. Okay, you can say Little Big Planet. Remember to check out the coffee shop for a bunch of free and cheap sound fonts, sample packs, things like that. And remember to join the Patreon for early access to stuff. And if you just want to support the channel and what I'm doing, um, and if you support the channel, then you will be as cool as these people. Selena, Justin Hawes, Devox, Sample Text 64, Drew Doodle, Ethan Isaiah Kirshner, Dean, Erian, Smiley, Jay Quinn, and Connor Wilson. Thank you all. Mwah, mwah, love you. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.